Okay, yeah. Um, my re um, presentation is less on trolls than on troll research, but I think, um, well, uh, are you all familiar with trolls? Do you have an idea what a troll is? Who isn't familiar with trolls? Who has never encountered the troll? What kind of troll? Okay, you, uh, any kind of troll. You have some kind, of, there are many types of trolls. <laughs> you. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's what my presentation is about, about the definition. It should be at the end, but um, you have all heard of it. It's not like, oh, what uh, is he talking about? So I will just proceed. Yeah, introduction, trolls. Um, for, the fir uh, for, for the moment, I will settle with this definition. These are users in online communities who somehow disrupt communication and collaboration, or they at least try to do so. This is a common um, concept and it is very broad and it's just for the introduction and we will see um, that it is somehow problematic. Um, and they appear to be re very relevant um, for these communities because um, they um, often cause a major disruption and huge discussions about them. Um, but somehow um, research um, on trolls is very scarce. Uh, over the last 15 years, um, I found six papers who explicitly deal with trolls in online communities. Peer-reviewed papers and one additional um, paper that somehow deals with the phenomenon, but not explicitly. Um, so I was wondering why is research so oblivious to trolls? Why is there not uh, more research on trolls if they are so relevant um, to online communities? Is it because it is a useless concept? Maybe science has a better concept and talks um, about the phenomenon uh, under light of this concept. Or um, is it an irrelevant phenomenon? Maybe it's not really interesting to science because it doesn't matter. Or um, are trolls a highly problematic research object and difficult to grasp and therefore um, um, researchers are discouraged um, from investigation. Um, and I thought, well, um, I could best answer these questions if I look at the existing literature um, on trolls. Um, and I chose a um, pragmatic approach. I thought, well, um, I will choose um, the papers which are somehow relevant, um, not only um, in, the, in the sense that they're peer-reviewed, that they're of scientific relevance, but also that they are relevant to an uh, online community. And I chose as a starting point for my investigation the German Wikipedia article Troll Netzkultur, which is the article about the phenomenon. And I um, took um, the peer-reviewed papers which were cited in the article and uh, I reviewed them with um, respect to context, context methods and findings. And my basic consideration was um, these texts are all accessible from the internet, so um, everybody can look them up and they um, should give, um, they are relevant to the community and they should give a representative insight into the phenomenon. Um, this is more what you would call a qualitative approach because um, as we will see, a quantitative approach um, is not really possible in this field. So, um, the sample was uh, a text from 1997, uh, um, Usenet Communities and the Cultural Politics of Information by Michelle Tepper, uh, a text by uh, Judith S. Donath um, from uh, 1998, Identity and Deception in the Virtual Community, a text by Susan Herring and colleagues, Searching for Safety Online, Managing Trolling in a Feminist Forum, and a more recent text from two, uh, 2010, um, which deals explicitly with Wikipedia trolls by Pnina Chachev and Nurika Hara, Beyond Vandalism, Wikipedia Trolls. So, the findings. Michelle Tepper, um, the 1997 text. Um, her context, um, which um, she investigates, is in use, Usenet news groups. Uh, are you familiar with news, Usenet? So this is a, 
Yeah, it's, it's a very early form of uh, online dwelling, as you might call it. Um, uh, very um, early communities, and from a Wikipedian point of view, they're very simple communities because um, they're relatively open and there's a lot of dynamic people coming, people going. And um, yeah, her methods were, uh, was an ethnographic analysis of ar archive discussions from um, these Usenet news groups. And um, I might better um, draw this on the board. And she was looking at a certain um, news group called Alternative um, Urban Folklore or um, Old Folklore Urban. And the people from this community uh, were frequently going to other communities and fooling them by um, starting fruitless discussions like um, in a Star Wars, um, in, a, in a Star Trek, Star Trek um, <laughs> news group, um, can light move in vacuum, for example? And people were uh, jumping on it and uh, were calling them dumb and whatever, and this was exactly what they were seeking for because um, they tested uh, how much humor other people had, and they were laughing their asses off because they um, were getting mad at it. So um, her um, point of view, um, she was somehow centered in this community and she was looking from there to other communities. She knew um, who those people were who were trolling because they um, actively identified themselves as trolls and what they did, um, they called it simply trolling. And so um, her results were Trolls are members of a distinct community, in this um, case AFU, and they invade other communities and play tricks on them. And um, this is playful and more or less harmless because uh, nobody gets hurt when um, Star Trek nerds um, smash their heads. And <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Next text is very similar in a certain respect because um, Judith S. Stornev, um, she uh, chose a similar context, um, which is also used in the news groups, but, um, and she also used ethnographic analysis of archived discussions, but um, what was different, she now wasn't centered in one community anymore, but she was looking at discussions in independent communities um, and she noticed that there are, were some users who were new, who came into this community and started discussions and um, people were not sure if these people were trolls or if they were just dumb or mad at someone and so the discussion um, spawned um, whether these people are trolls and also she included cases um, where people um, were very aggressive verbally towards other people who, uh, and insulted them. And this caused uh, major disruptions in this community. So her results were um, trolls are participants in these discussions and um, they are deceiving others about their identity because people wouldn't tell if they were trolls or not. Uh, each of them would say, no, I'm not a troll, and I'm very serious about this. Um, but, um, and she also said, it's playful on the one hand. She said, it's a game, but a game which is played without the consent of most of the participants, because um, those people who were in this community and who took part um, in the discussion were hurt by the insults and um, the cause of the discussion. And she said, trolling can be very harmful. The next study is by Susan Herring at co and colleagues, Searching for Safety Online. And her context is a feminist online forum. And this is, was a forum um, which was founded by um, feminist users who wanted um, to discuss um, feminist issues, women issues, um, in a v relatively safe environment. So um, they had a community and what happened was um, there was a user named Kent and he came to this community and um, 
he be became part of it. And he started discussions where he insulted feminism, women, and so on, and he was very destructive. And it was very clear that, that his intentions were not at all feminist, and, uh, but he was um, very open about it. And he said, yes, I'm an anti-feminist, and I um, don't think um, anyone should be a feminist. And he insulted other people, and it took them very long um, to throw them, uh, to throw, um, Kent out of the community and ban him. But um, what is interesting to me, in, um, at least in the case as um, Herring and colleagues um, presented, no one was calling Kent a troll. Um, he was um, somehow disturbing, but no one um, considered him to be a troll. But um, Herring, who draws from the um, troll concept of Donath, um, said, yes, well, maybe he sees it as a sport, and um, we don't know where he's from, and so on, and we cannot be sure um, if he is really honest about himself. So um, for the time, we will settle um, with calling him a troll. So their results were trolls are members of a community, um, which is interesting because they're now not only invaders, but active part of a community, and um, they are attacking others verbally and also their viewpoints. Um, so in the last study is from 2010, which was very interesting because um, not only is the context a Wikipedia project, the Hebrew Wikipedia, but the methods are no longer um, only ethnographic analysis of archive discussions, but um, the researchers also conducted email interviews. And um, at first, the interviews were intended to be um, in, to include also trolls and admins, but they were actively discouraged from interviewing trolls by admins, and they weren't able to find any troll who would want to give them an interview, which is somewhat not surprising if um, someone wants to deceive you about his identity and uh, he is to reveal it in an interview, um, he won't do it. So um, they only interviewed um, 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 sysops or administrators of um, Wikipedia. And um, they looked at discussions. And so trolls were, in this study, identified by the admins they were interviewing. And um, they were making very wild guesses why um, people are engaging in trolling and um, the admins and the researchers came to the results that um, trolls are not only disguising their, their identity, but they are also actively violating policies of a project. And the motivation is they are trying to prove a point um, in this community, in a discussion, or they are seeking revenge because they were at one time um, a part of the community, but not as a troll. And they, at some point, became a troll, um, and they are now seeking revenge. So, um, for the context, um, the studies shifted from relatively open and rather unstructured communities, um, where there are not many hurdles to enter these communities, to participate in discussions, to more exclusive, or complex communities. For example, Wikipedia, um, where you have a lot of informal structure and you have all, uh, also articles and talk pages and very different sites and chats and mailing lists and so on. And um, it's, it's rather difficult um, to, to get um, uh, an accurate impression of the structure of these communities. Um, the methods. Um, Ethnographic analysis was prevailing among the methods, and only one study cho um, actually chose um, interviews as a method. And the results were also very messy. Um, in the first time, we have collectively acting, playful um, actors who come from outside the community into the community, and um, who are very open about their intentions and the motives to um, problematic community members where we have no idea where they come from 
uh, if they were part of the community, what are their intentions, um, what is their real identity, are they really trolls? So um, trolls become more and more problematic, not only for the researchers, but also for the members of the online communities. My conclusions, um, troll research is uh, indeed messy and there is no real consensus about the phenomenon in the literature because if you look at the four studies you will more or less find three or four definitions of the troll and you will find descriptions of three very different um, phenomena. Um, the archive analysis which was um, done by most of the studies is a limited means if you want to investigate a troll because you're only looking at the past um, and you're only looking at an incomplete archive because what is not archived, for example, are mailing lists, chats, real life meetings, and so on. And um, you then tend um, to look only at the um, finished product, which is the troll or the opinion of some community members that this person is a troll. And um, you miss uh, the contentiousity of um, the phenomenon because you don't know um, if it couldn't have turned out otherwise. And it is also problematic to get near the troll because they're very secretive, obviously. And um, all researchers said they were deceiving about the true nature. So um, they're difficult to observe and you can't um, easily interview or investigate this, uh, them. So um, it's, it's very difficult for a researcher um, to get a grasp of um, this phenomenon, although it is obviously very um, relevant to the communities um, in which these trolls act. So um, what are my conclusions for research? I think um, troll research should focus on the difficulties of defining the trolls because I think this will be a key in understanding them. Um, because how are they um, indeed defined by the community? Um, because a troll um, or the phenomenon of the troll is not um, an issue of one single person who invades a community. There are other actors in it. And it depends on them if the troll is successful. Um, if they um, are aware, for example, if an AFU member comes into their community and tr tries to play a trick on them, um, he will fail to be a troll, actually. And if they um, take him for serious and answer politely to his questions, he will also fail um, because he um, doesn't get to fool them into fruitless discussion and they will simply hint him for um, his wrong um, yeah, opinion. So um, I think it is um, important to observe the making of the troll, um, the construction of, uh, of a person as a troll in a community because they are not the only actors. And I think this is best done uh, indeed in an ethnographic field study um, because as we have seen, trolls are not a fixed phenomenon. You can't simply measure them in a quantitative analysis. You can't um, easily map them in a network or um, something like that. So um, I think um, researchers should go um, into the field and um, keep their eyes open for trolls and look at the discussions um, which are dealing with the trolls and look at the narratives that center around the trolls and or look at the motives um, of the people involved and try to interview the people maybe before they become a troll um, so they might get nearer to the phenomenon. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's, um, that's a good question. Um, well, if you, let's, let's assume you're an ethnographer, because I'm not and you're not at the moment, we're not, we're talking about a hypo ha um, hypothetical um, situation. 
but um, you see that there are people and who interact with each other. And you can ask these people, and of course they can deceive you, um, but you will always get an account of them. If you are looking at um, maybe an archived um, internet discussion, you have no means of intervening, of taking your part um, in the game, and so you can't really say um, if you would have made a difference. This is what I mean when I say interviewing a troll. Of course, you can't trust him or her, but um, you will always see that it has consequences if you interview or if you don't interact with him. Um, I think at least um, the first studies were largely informed by feminist uh, work. Um, I know of Doneth, she looked at um, wedding forums and so on, and it, was, it appeared to me that it was a very feminist approach, and Herring, um, of course, is a feminist um, researcher on this field, but um, I think we have four studies, and it's, I wouldn't judge on these four studies, but um, I think, yes, um, maybe women have more interest in, in this field because it relates to very um, subjective um, issues. Because if someone gets hurt in an internet forum, who cares? Yeah? It's not really relevant, but to the people who are engaging in the discussions, it is, I think. Yeah. Because actually, I think there are more studies on trolls. And actually, I think the most famous troll, troll researcher there is, is also a woman, and you haven't mentioned her, and it's Gabriella Coleman. And what she's doing is doing research on anonymous. And when, when I was listening to your story about the Usenet case, that, that's the origins of the 4chan uh, anonymous uh, movement, so to speak. Yeah. Because what they were, they were trolls. They were going uh, uh, to other forums and trolled them. They and they still do. And they, they still do. And they still yeah, do. Yeah. We, I mean, I, I am beat hard, of course, yeah. and, and I, I knew, but this w would be my own account, and I wanted to, to make up, um, I, I, I'm following Latour here, if he says we, I should follow the actor. And so I looked at the, um, the links they were making, they were referring to, from the article which the article was referring to, and I didn't make up my own ideas and bringing them in, because I thought I should keep um, to the ground here and stick to the empirical. I mean, I sh you of course you um, could um, incorporate this in a study, but I think it would be of a greater framework. And you should, you should think how you should bring it in. Because I think um, I would stick very close to the phenomenon. But you mentioned an interesting point, and I think you should of course compare um, 4chan um, to this phenomenon, because it's the AFU um, of today. I'm not sure whether this is really a different phenomenon, but of mm. course we can yeah. discuss it later on. That's your question. Uh, so if you can uh, associate a physical face to a nickname, so you could not call him a troll. Well. Oh, I don't call it by face. I also yeah. don't want <laughs> <laughs> uh, Definitely. That's, that's a difficult question. Yeah, Yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, I, I, have to, I have to make a distinction here. Um, what I was looking at wasn't the troll itself, but how it was handled by researchers. And I can't make any um, claim about the troll itself because I didn't look at it, but more on the researchers and what they were saying about it. And if you compare, for example, a Wikipedian concept of a troll with a fortune, um, concept of a troll, these are very different because Fortune, of course, stresses the playfulness and um, to them it's without any causes what they are doing, more or less, while in Wikipedia trolls appear uh, to be very serious people um, who are not very humorous and um, they are seeking revenge, which is not very playful. I mean, um, I just wanted to show how diverse this phenomenon actually is. And 
before I did this um, review, I was wondering if we are really talking about the same um, phenomenon. And I som somehow wanted to show um, a link of how these concepts got um, transformed over time and place. So, um, coming back to your question, if you know a troll by face, um, I think this is possible in Wikipedia because um, you can identify them if you have a very anonymous um, setting such as 4chan or AFU, this might not be possible and maybe this adds um, to the already very different conceptions of trolls. <laughs> there are no women on the internet, it's 4chan's <laughs> explanation. Yeah, but they do on 4chan. And uh, I noticed because I was somehow intermediate. I, I have been. I have considered myself a troll for a long time because I was. I, no, not not on Fortune, not on Fortune, and not on Wikipedia. But I was banned at one time from um, an online RPG forum, which uh, and this ban I considered very unfair because it came out of the blue and it wasn't warned before, and I didn't think I did anything wrong. Um, and so for one year. I uh, tried to uh, have my revenge on these people. So, um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But, um, yeah. But, but I noticed that somehow the trolls on Wikipedia, which I was encountering, um, they weren't very much like that. There was somehow a difference. And I was wondering, how could you get near these trolls? And then I was thinking about Fortune, and I thought, Oh, there are threats which, uh, which vanish uh, in the course of minutes. How should you investigate that if not by ethnographic means, if you don't really participate, maybe really as a troll to see what it's like? Yeah, masculinism. Yeah. Okay, I think I thank you for this discussion. I think this is the perfect, you know, <laughs> uh, 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 over uh, the überleitung for the, the transfer. transfer to the next talk we are having. Thank you very much for uh, your insights on the floor. So Hi, I'm Vera. I'm um, going to talk about the gender gap uh, on Wikipedia, um, which is something that has already been talked about yesterday and Sarah is going to talk about tomorrow. Uh, but I try to actually find some solutions to the problem uh, in my mm. essay. Um, this is a figure you've all heard before. Only 9% of, of contributors to Wikipedia are women and that's actually a decline since 2010 when the survey data showed that it was 13.5%. Um, 
when I first heard this figure, I was just amazed. I had been contributing to Wikipedia myself for over a year and had never really saw it as an issue but that I was doing as a woman, but apparently it was now. Um, that there is such a low number of women contributing to Wikipedia can of course be considered uh, an issue um, when there are different views that are highly gender-based. Uh, having uh, uh, such a low number of women contributing may cause an issue uh, to the neutrality of Wikipedia, which is of course one of its foundations. Um, and there's in the real world there are of course uh, sub in subjects of interest that interest more women than men and if there aren't women contributing to Wikipedia it is less likely that those uh, topics will get an article that is of su sufficient length. And another issue that has come out of uh, statistics on Wikipedia is that the total number of contributors to Wikipedia is in decline and apparently women are one group that haven't fully contributed up to this point and this might uh, um, appealing to that group might be a way of uh, counteracting this decline. Um, one of the things I found when I went into some research on the topic was that not only were there very few women contributing to Wikipedia but that uh, the proportion of readers was also highly skewed with only 30% of respondents to a survey data being female and this is on readership um, and of course when you don't have uh, a readership base that, th that is when you have a readership that's already skewed, that's the basis where you get your uh, contributors from. Um, it, uh, one of the power laws that it's not the most obvious graph, I should have found a more obvious graph about power laws, but uh, yesterday you saw very interesting graphs of Benjamin sh showing how 1% of contributors to Wikipedia tend to contribute about half of contributions there are. And um, it, it, the way that uh, th this is proportioned can be exaggerated when your reader base is, uh, is skewed. Um, one thing, one other thing I found when I was, <laughs> I should have, I'm giving away the joke on my slides. No, um, <laughs> um, well, one of the w ways we write, we, we, we write Wikipedia is from a neutral point of view. And I found this essay by Robin Lakoff from 1973 that talks about how women are brought up to use a far more indirect way of speech. Uh, so if I were to say, oh dear, you've put a butter, a peanut butter in the refrigerator again, um, that would be more feminine than if I were to say, shit, you've put a peanut butter in the refrigerator again. Um, that wouldn't be ladylike. Um, <laughs> and of course, this way of indirect speech uh, isn't, is far more likely to get reverted or altered or even deleted. And that can be frustrating uh, when you're starting out editing Wikipedia. Um, and uh, and another study I found by Susan Herring, who was also mentioned by our previous speaker, um, but her, uh, the research I found of her was from 1992 when she was uh, researching 
um, how factual uh, di uh, different message boards were. And what she actually found was in a message board on linguistics, which was on the left, where uh, only 17% of contributors were female, uh, the percentage of um, messages posted that were the opinion of the person writing the, uh, the post um, was, uh, was far more, well, the message posted was far more an expression of their view, of their opinion, than compared to a message board on women's, uh, women's studies uh, that was 49% female and had far more uh, a tendency to be providing information and that's actually and had a far dense far more denser be, uh, fact based per message uh, which is actually something we would like to have on wikipedia of course um, there might of course be an an interpretation issue um, th there might be a bias that what she judges to be an, op uh, an, an opinion versus information uh, is open to her personal interpretation. Um, <laughs> this is um, this comes from uh, Sarah's Sarah's uh, opinion po uh, polling of. Uh, of Wikipedia users, um, and I was actually very stunned yesterday when I ran in into her here at, at the at the conference. Um, uh, these are the derogatory terms that people have been called, uh, women have been called on Wikipedia, that they've mentioned, and the, yeah, it, it's fairly obvious that the that the terms used are very much focused on their gender. Uh, of course, as you can see, the most prominent being bitch, but there are also other, uh, other terms on this slide, as you can see, like witch and cunt and prostitute. Um. Uh, if I may ask, most of these comments came from men or from women? Now this is from an um, well, you, you you sometimes don't know, uh, but these are the comments that they reported getting directed at them when they are participating in Wikipedia. Some something that uh yeah, something that more or less came from the New York opinion pages was that there might be uh that me, women might be ha having hesitations to contribute to Wikipedia uh, because being a U Wikipedian might be considered nerdy. Um, Please don't tell anybody, or rather no one in this room, that Larry Sanger that he was used as a presentation. Please Next slide. Um, well, mm, user reviews have shown that the, the average Wikipedian is a 31-year-old white, white male that has a higher education and ha has been educated in a technical field. So the, the, the stereotype has its sources, uh, but um, one of the ways Wikimedia Wiki Netherlands is doing something about is by um, 
this is a photo shoot. I myself participated in um, that is showing the faces of Wikipedia. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's equally balanced when it comes to gender. Um, 43% of the respondents to Sarah's study said that uh, having more female represent spokespersons uh, might contribute to having more uh, female contributors. Uh, one other thing that came out of her study is... Um, oh, damn it, I forgot my notes. Um, well, 50th, uh, there was a general survey of all Wikipedians that, um, no, not just Wikipedians, but uh, visitors to the site, and that had 53% of respondents that said that they didn't edit Wikipedia, say that, um, that they con didn't consider editing Wikipedia because they didn't have uh, enough information, that they didn't and considered them informed enough. And one of the th things that came out of Sarah's study um, was that they would see it uh, as contributing to combating the, the age gap if there were more outreach programs. Uh, one of the things Sarah has been doing is organizing editathons where she focuses primarily on editing articles on women. Um, in my paper, I also cite a research that did a longitudinal study where students at the beginning of the year were either put in uh, mixed gender groups or uh, single sex groups. And the women that had been in uh, the single sex groups uh, were over time taking more risks. And you can see editing Wikipedia as a form of taking a risk, of taking a stand and saying that you do have something to say about a subject, um, that your yeah, opinion on what is true, maybe, or should be improved, does matter. Um, and a way of Improving that might be to organize more of these editatrons. Um, I thank you for your time. Uh, I'm in one virtue on Wikipedia, and you can contact me if you have any. Uh, do you have any questions? So, any questions? There are some because there have been so many already during your talk. <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, this week I spoke with a uh, woman uh, because I'm organizing also the wiki in Dublin, and she said, yeah, she also knows some friends, some female friends, and they also would edit, and she also would edit if there have been uh, or would be a recipe editor. Mm -hmm. And maybe what is this what you get? Mm -hmm. I know it's 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 in work and it will come very soon. Yeah. Yeah, I did include in my paper some statistics on people saying that the the, the technical getting over the technical issues on learning how to edit Wikipedia. Um, might be an issue, but it, the data on that was somewhat conflicting. Uh, some, some surveys did get that feedback, some only had like a 17% of people saying that that would be an issue. Um, but I could also think about male uh, persons uh, saying that this is the problem. Mm -hmm. This is definitely an issue. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But also in general. Yeah, in general. general. It's not. It's yeah. not. It's not general. Also general. Yeah. Right. I think coming from you know coming from a developing country where even less women are more likely to contribute mm -hmm. to Wikipedia than women are in the developed world. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
What about Malaysia? What yeah, about that's India? what my, my question would have been. Well, it depends, really. It's like, at least in the Philippine case, where majority of her editors are men, and I could probably count the number of women who actually edit Wikipedia who are from the Philippines who are female. Um, it it kind of got me thinking, coming from your presentation, as to whether or not there are things that are just beyond the community that likely inhibit women from contributing to the project? Yeah, like, well, I mentioned the language issue on the difference between how women are taught, are taught to speak. And of course, that's not something Wikipedia could fix. That's something that has developed over time. And it, it, it's, it's sad that we can't. But I think your comment is that, that, that aside from language, there might be other barriers that are not within the community or the project, but... Well, on the issue of language, you know, if people like Sarah and like Siska Doviana of Indonesia are able to um, speak the way that most Wikipedians do speak, then I think language is probably the least of women's wor worries. But like, there are several things that I am concerned about that inhibit women from contributing to Wikipedia, especially in countries where historically women have been marginalized. And, mm -hmm. and what I was looking for, at least coming from the results of all the research about the gender gap on Wikipedia, is whether or not, you know, if we empower women on Wikipedia, does this mm -hmm. translate into something Larger. bigger than just empowering women on Wikipedia? Well, the language you have to use on Wikipedia, of course, also helps in getting into academia. Mm -hmm. um, this paper I wrote was part of a class that was pretty much the first time my major was supposed to write a paper. And coming out of my experience on Wikipedia, I was fairly bored most of the time because I already knew about citations and how to, to, how to write something like that. Um, and yeah, th it's... Uh, Wikipedia does have a larger social role. It can have, of course, uh, and should have, I think. Oh. Um, yeah. um, I was just kind of wondering, uh, looking at this wonderful uh, word cloud there with all these <laughs> words that make me really angry, uh, whether... We don't need to see it again. I think we're... <laughs> <laughs> Whether um, having something in the editing uh, window that if you use one of these words would stop you to make you reflect for a moment, say, just a second, you've used one of these words that could be derogatory. Are you sure that you're being new in a neutral point of view using this word, or are you trying to, you know, uh, be derogatory? Especially if it's just on the top pages to get people to at least think for a second before writing this crap and then the, uh, then the story. I wonder if that would have an effect. You know, mm -hmm. not, not to censor, but to uh, get the guys to think for a second before... I have a break. I have a break when have a, t have a five second wait when, you're, when your post has such a word in it. Are we, say, are we being civil? <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia. Like for example, on the Chinese Wikipedia, before you post anything, you're forced to preview what you post before you post it. Mm -hmm. So people still won't care. <laughs> this is stuff people are putting up people's talk pages yeah. directly to them with a purpose. Whether you're an IP that's been blocked, you know, or whatever, you've had your edits reverted, or you're just a jerk troll. Mm -hmm. And I could name some names of people who I know who said I could name names of people who call me names like that, and we would all know them. And they edit in Wikipedia, and they're advocates and they're all on the mailing list. I don't think telling people, oh, are you behaving is going to, you know, are you sure you want to say this is going to, we need a culture change. Yeah, but how are we going to get that? Yes. This is, I mean, we have been working on this since, I don't know, a different area, but we are working on this just a different field and we, we're not able to do that. I, I mean, yeah. since 20 years we've been working on uh, ways, oh, the numbers of Computer science students. Oh yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah. still an issue. So <laughs> I'm more like four years. I've got my. Yeah. I'm doing some stuff. I just can't talk. About and it. it's getting worse. <laughs> and, and, and the problem is getting worse. I mean, yes, it's all getting better. Yeah. Okay.
point. Yeah, um, what I observed in my university courses, and I think it is a very similar situation there. Um, when it comes to speaking about texts that we have read, um, the, the, um, the lecturer usually asks, who has read the text? Who can tell me about what is in the text? Who can tell me some knowledge from the text? He's not asking opinions, he wants objective um, information. So even if there are 16 female students in the course and I'm the only man, and I um, am there and I'm raising my hand and I'm telling something which I um, consider um, objective information, the rest of the course is silent. Yes. Because as soon as you will ask a mixed course about objective information, about knowledge, they are silent. But if you ask them on opinions, on feelings about the text, then they raise their hands. And this is, but this is uh, legitimate because it's subjective. It's, it has no place there. And here it's very similar. I, I observed that about half of the people here are female, but if I look at the people who raise their hands, it's a majority who is male, and it's a big majority. At least in my impression. And in the, in the courses I visited, because maybe... Yeah. And here, for the first time, here it's different. And in this session, you yeah, yeah. So you mean in general, okay. Yeah, okay, you can, you can dispute it. But if you look at Wikipedia, it's about objective information, it's about knowledge. And if you, as a woman, come up and say, you hurt my feelings, if, if you call me a Nazi, or whatever, or a feminazi, or whatever, they, um, they're looking at you and, oh, come on. You yeah, and your children. Stop whining. Yeah, stop whining. Yeah, stop and whining. I, I, as a white Protestant male, yeah, you can't <laughs> insult me. Well, you can't insult me. But this is, a, this is a really a difference, because people don't understand. If, from my viewpoint, they couldn't understand that this could hurt anybody. But you, can't, you can't call me a bitch. I, 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 I do think that the, what um, I'm working on for the foundation right now, I'm not talking about what I'm working on tomorrow, but I'm working on kind of an online call to action space kind of thing. It's very hazy right now. But I think for women, because we're very social creatures, you know, we like to sit together and talk and go, this is, you know, and, 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 and we do work better. We're all working together. It's very supportive. We like that many to many support system that we benefit from. We thrive on it, most of us, I say. And I think we're going to get the most benefit out of embracing the fact that Wikipedia is a social construct. Mm -hmm. Whether we like it, Wikipedia, not Facebook, we have that on English Wikipedia, is the biggest stupidest thing because sorry I'm here at a conference with my friends and people I'm going to leave with as friends and I'm going to socialize on and off of Wikipedia. Talk pages are social environments whether you're talking about the content or you're talking calling someone a bitch or you're saying great work you did with a barn star or what award you might give. And I really think that to have that space that is welcome to anybody to participate as long as you're an advocate and you're comfortable and respectful of being around a bunch of women or not in Wikipedia having that social environment and embracing that aspect of us is going to be a savior next to what I'll talk about tomorrow uh, of, of Wikipedia. I mean, embracing who we really are, we're writing a Wikipedia, an encyclopedia, and we're doing it collectively, which is a social experience. And to embrace that will make women, I think, kind of go, this is more fun than I thought it would be. And look at all the environments that we can create, you know? I would, but and we're not neutral because of what we choose to write about. So, so. Just, just to finish my That's just one of my opinions, um, though. My opinion. uh, what I would like to stress this subjective because mm. I think it is not a legitimate. It is a legitimate um, position that someone has. And I think all this analysis and the structure of Wikipedia and so on, and this, uh, the objective things that you can make in research, they add to this problem that there is knowledge, but no opinions and no feelings, no place for feelings in Wikipedia. Right? Yeah. And that's yeah. going to stay on the front page of Wikipedia. Yeah. On the front and I article. think this that's is something we should I think the, that precise okay. here is the problem. Okay, we make a last round. I would suggest we make a last round of comments, collect them, and Vera has the last word, okay? <laughs> so that's <laughs> one, one, one more. Pardon? No, no, please, David? Just a quick question. Did you try to compare your findings on Wikipedia with another project like the Gutenberg project that women are very much involved in? Mm -hmm. 
Um, well, I asked Benjamin yesterday <laughs> about, about his research on the different wikis, uh, how the gender ratio is there, and he said that it was pretty uh, much the same in other wiki projects on Wikia that, had, that they also had a low uh, percentage of women participating. Um, he actually doubted my number on uh, the 30% readership of Wikipedia. Um, he, had a re uh, he had a review of the general use of, of the internet, of, of just uh, internet users. And in that study, both men and women were equally likely to say that they use Wikipedia. Um, the so uh, there might what this research doesn't show is how intensely they might read it. So it, yeah, looking up something and clicking on the on the next page and the next page and the next page might be still a gender difference. Um, he did say that when it comes to fiction. Uh, of fans, fan sites, um, that fan fiction was almost exclusively written by women. <laughs> that the difference uh, between the contributions in a particular fandom to the wikia and to the, uh, to, to the f uh, fan fiction base was almost like sp uh, day and night when it comes to gender. And that the, the fiction, the fan fiction side of things also sometimes had documentation and that that was a kind of documentation that women did participate in. Um, if that could be a, a basis for having, uh, improving the gender gap, I don't know. Um, so, so would you say that maybe it's not Jimmy Wales, but uh, women have founded Wikipedia, maybe everything would could be around other way around. <sighs> it, it might have gotten the end of the, the Hitchhiker's Galaxy um, wiki uh, encyclopedia, then it's still fiction and the, the ownership might be an issue. Um, if I'm, if, if you're writing fiction, you generally don't like other people inserting new information. Um, but then, yeah. Do, do you want to have some? I have, I have a very, very nice question. So, um, what can I do? So, I would like to break that So, I have my little daughter is now a year. <laughs> so she, she's a year. <laughs> so, I would like to raise her in a way that she is participating in the Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia project. What can I do? So yes. to, to raise her in a way that she is different to the majority of women today. Can we come to be helping? Come to the wiki from we have. Yeah. Oh, 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 the, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's I just thought that I did this week. Yeah. Um, my experience at Wikimedia Nederland conferences is that there are, well, very young teens on, uh, also hanging around that, that, that have parents that contribute a lot to Wikipedia and that are already wearing the t-shirt. It's not about parents, it's, it's about the understanding of women. Yeah. yeah. Their understanding, you know, um, um, mm -hmm. how they believe what, what they mm -hmm. to do. I mean, I think this is, this is the question. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yes. Well, um, if you read the essay by uh, Robert Lekhoff, um, it's it, it, it's something to be aware about. He says that when women, when kids are growing up, that b uh, girls are just far more likely to be uh, corrected by their parents when they say something that that's that. That, 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 that might be rude or, or, or too direct and that they're more trained in using indirect and polite language. Um, 
that might be difficult raising a kid because, well, being rude still isn't a, a nice thing to do, of course. Okay, two final questions, <laughs> quick, please, Johanna and Deborah, and then we you have the last word at the front. Well, I think that question apply to the, uh, the question before. Um, I have not seen research so much uh, around participation in online communities, but when it comes to political participation, mm -hmm. at least in Germany, you see different decrees. The higher you get, the better yeah. women are represented, but on the communal level, women are not that good represented. And the survey in Germany showed the main reason is that they don't like so much to go to the community and speak up in the social environment, mm -hmm. they also live. That was one of the results, and it links mm -hmm. to yeah, what you said. So yes. when you ask how you should raise your daughter, that she's always standing up and making her oh, voice. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what well, this is not a problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, I recently joined the Labour Party in the <laughs> Netherlands, so <laughs> there again, I'm part of the minority. I have an issue with the idea of being the norm and it's the females who have to do something yeah. so that they're able to edit yeah. Wikipedia. Yeah. Um, I really want to raise awareness of the fact that this definition of what is norm mm -hmm. and that, that, that women are abnormal, uh, we need to look at, at question what is the normal and, and is it nice to call each other bitches? No, it's not. Uh, what can we do to get the atmosphere different? Whether it's getting to know each other, I mean, the, the stammtisch of the guys see, you know, and I don't bite much for it. Finding mechanisms for toning it down, for making it a place that everyone feels welcome. Yeah, it's about having allies, and it's better than the The field of interest is very important. I know that uh, that women are very attracted to the languages. Yes. Yeah. That, that was one of the reasons I was surprised at first uh, yeah. by... I, was, I, was I don't want to be a killjoy, but I, I really, because we want to have 10 minutes break before the lightning talk session starts, and I want to give uh, Vera the last word, so please, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell uh, us... Uh, uh, in a, in why, why is this important? Why is it important? No, <laughs> um, What do you take with you from this discussion? No, I, I, I do think it's important for women to participate and speak up in general in society. Um, it, it, it's really terrible how passive women are expected to be, especially when you see popular, uh, women in popular culture being portrayed as being the damsel in distress um, and I do think it's empowering to edit Wikipedia and see your article and it's uh, uh, Wikipedia is a collaborative effort it's uh, and I think that one of the ways uh, women one of the things that women are taught to do is building alliances and that's something highly valued, and I, I, I now know what I'm going to say, finally. Um, <laughs> there are now more women in university than men, and that's a, the, uh, that's a highly, cap uh, that's educa that's they're being educated, and still they end up being, a percentage of them being mothers and being at home. Uh, they probably did something in college that they were passionate about and not being able of the professional market anymore um, isn't an issue when you're editing Wikipedia. Anyone can edit Wikipedia and I think it would be a waste if they uh, sit at home um, pondering the days that they were in college and not doing anything with that. <laughs>